Digi disagrees with MBTI's measurement of personality through behavioral symptoms because context can change your personality. Digi believes that for typology's sake, thoughts are more important than actions, and this is the guiding idea of neurotyping, which DigiBro made, and has 16 types just like MBTI. Neurotyping measures thought processes, which cause personality. There's just one problem. Thought processes like personality, change because of context. Let's say you finally are able to narrow down your neurotype to one of the 16 boxes and you've found your type, congratulations. Now who's to say, just like personality, depending on what situation you've put yourself in and what people surround you, does your thought process change? Of course it does. When you're at work and when you're at school, when you're at home and when you're gaming, you all think different ways, and thus your thought process changes. So you've picked a type, but you change types sometimes. Digi's solution to this was a heat map. Now, heat maps are all well and good, but when it came down to it, neurotyping is a topology system, and you are still inside one of these 16 boxes. And now comes a problem that I have with all typology systems in general. Once you choose a type, all your actions and the reasons for those actions are filtered through the idea of a predetermined conclusion. Say you pick a neurotype, like human calculator. The action you take and the why. Now, instead of diagnosing the why and then putting your, the, charting that the why and the action somewhere on the map, we just put you, we already determined that we already know the answer for why you did that. We did, you did it because you're a human calculator. Now, this is not always the case, but it often is. And this is the problem I have with typology. Digibro believes it is easier to classify someone in neurotyping and harder to classify someone in MBTI. His rationale for this is that it's easier to just think about it and harder to take a test. Well, MBTI is a 12 minute test and neurotyping video is an hour long plus the time it takes to actually think about what type you could be. I guess you could do that during the video, but it's still like five times longer. So I'm not saying one is easier than the other, but you know. Digi believes in two axes of thought. The first of these is linearity to laterality. Linear thinkers have a single train of thought at any given time, while lateral thinkers have multiple. Lateral thinkers tend to communicate in indirect ways, while linear thinkers communicate in straightforward ways. Let's skip the trains of thought for now. We'll come back to that later when Digi talks about it again. Let's focus on the communication aspect. There's linear, there's lateral. There's the straightforward communication and the indirect communication. Linear thinkers communicate in a straightforward manner. Right? That's what Digi said. Lateral thinkers tend to communicate in indirect ways. Now, this is just a tendency. As far as we know, linear thinkers cannot do this. Linear thinkers cannot communicate indirectly. They only communicate in a straightforward way. Lateral thinkers, because they only tend to in communicate indirectly, they could also communicate in a straightforward manner. What does this tell us? Well, the fact that both types can communicate in a straightforward manner kind of just cancels out the necessity to mention it at all. The real thing we get from this is that lateral thinkers communicate indirectly. That's the important thing to get out of this. That when you communicate indirectly, you're doing a lateral action. It is a lateral action to communicate indirectly. We still don't even know what communicating indirectly means, but we know that it's something only lateral thinkers do. While straightforward thinking is just a thing anyone can do.